If you sometimes feel like people in your life don't seem to stick around, like you're pushing them away somehow, you may be wondering if it's because of something you're doing. So rather than letting you drive yourself crazy trying to figure out what's up, I'm going to present to you five self-reflection questions that may help you clarify your situation. So stick around. Hi, I'm Leslie. I am a life coach based in Brisbane, Australia, and this topic is something that comes up sometimes in sessions or just casual conversations. And my response usually starts with something like this. How you make people feel means a lot more to a relationship or a friendship than how you intend to make that person feel. And if you feel like people are leaving you all the time, it could just be that they're living their own life. And it may not be because of something you did at all. But before you can take action to either develop stronger relationship skills or repair broken relationships, you need to look inward and think about your own habits and behaviors and whether they might be contributing to your relationship breakdowns. Question number one. Do you complain too much? People like being around people who help them feel good about life. And if you're just hanging out with a friend, engaging in some mutual rant against something or have a crabby or controversial response to something every now and then, that may be fine, depending on the situation. But if you have a habit of single-handedly bringing out the negative in otherwise positive or neutral situations, or you act like it's your duty to constantly remind people that there are bad things happening in the world while you're all just hanging out and having fun, people are gonna leave conversations with you feeling dragged down, not grateful for the enlightenment you've offered them. People don't need you to remind them that things suck sometimes. Now, there are plenty of other sources for that, and that links directly with the next question. Question number two, do you play the victim? Now this question can be very emotionally charged in the current world social climate, so let me be clear. When I say play the victim, I'm not talking about seeking social justice or engaging in political causes that are important to you. What I'm talking about is being the kind of person who can never take personal responsibility for the bad things that happen in their lives. You know, where everything is always someone else's fault, and if there isn't a person to blame, it's some other entity. And for some reason, they feel the need to bring it up constantly in, in conversations. Um, and if this is a habit that you recognize within yourself, one little way that you can start to change this is by not unloading all of your woes and betrayals onto the people around you, and instead engage in conversations from the viewpoint of a person taking action to improve their situation. How to do that is a much bigger conversation topic, but that should at least get you thinking about how to act less victim-y and more inspirational, which is already a good start. Question number three. Do you show interest in what other people have to say or do you hijack their stories? It is important to recognize when it is or is not your turn to speak. For example, say someone has taken the initiative to tell you about something exciting they've experienced in their life or some problem they're dealing with. Do you have a habit of jumping in with a story of your own before they've really had a chance to fully express what's on their mind? I think people do this a lot more often than they realize. And you might think that you're showing this person that you can relate to their situation and that that's a good thing. But 
what may actually what you may actually be doing is making them feel like you're only interested in what you have to say and meanwhile they, they struggle to get a word in edgewise because by turning the attention toward yourself you've effectively changed the subject and this can also make you seem like you're really competitive in some cases like you constantly have to one-up people in a conversation so if you want to show interest um, don't make other people's stories about yourself instead maybe ask them some questions to understand their experience better and sometimes it's better to save your own perspectives for when someone has asked for them or at least had the chance to express themselves thoroughly question number four do you engage in gossip no one likes to feel like people are speaking negatively about them when they're not around and if you have a habit of talking behind people's backs as it were then the people you are speaking to have every reason to assume that they may become the people you are speaking about at some stage. This means that by gossiping about people, you're showing that you can't be trusted, that you are judgmental, that people can't be open with you. And people don't want to be around someone who makes them feel uncomfortable being themselves. So if you catch yourself saying negative things about people, it's something you really need to control within yourself because in some cases it may actually be saying something a lot worse about you, the speaker, than about the person you are you know, spreading gossip about. Question number five. Do you break your promises? People like being connected to people they can rely on. So, for example, when you commit to Meeting someone somewhere at a certain time, do you keep that promise? People have complex lives and schedules and do not want to wait around wondering if or when you're going to show up to something. So if leaving people waiting and wondering is something you do as a habit, you may be making them feel like you don't value their time and this can make people not want to involve you in things after a while. And if you have a habit of overscheduling yourself or you're just generally really busy, then that can go some way toward explaining why you may flake out on people. But in terms of maintaining a healthy social relationship, your time management problems are not an excuse for habitually making promises that you can't keep. And this goes back to the whole intentions thing. You may have intended to do your best to honor a commitment that you've made with someone, but making someone feel like they're not a priority repeatedly outweighs any intention you may have had. And people generally don't want to continue to make an effort for someone they can't trust to keep their promises. Okay, so obviously this list of questions could be much, much longer, but focusing on just these five is, is a good starting point to tell whether your actions are somehow pushing people out of your life. And yeah, it could also just be that people are busy and somewhere in your head you're overinflating the situation or making up some story based on your past experiences. So it may be worth checking in with some of the people you feel you've pushed away. Or if this is a long running issue or a super stressful issue for you, you might want to check in with a professional, a psychologist, a therapist, a counselor, or a life coach. So I'll leave it all there for now. Um, if you'd like to get in touch with me, message me here or through my other social media channels or visit my website, lesliebcoaching.com and book a free consultation with me. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share my videos with all of your favorite people. All right, um, it's time for me to head home to meet the hubby and the toddler and have some dinner because I'm really hungry. Anyway, I'll see you next time.